from the dawn of time, my hairline has always been really far back. While this is a great opener for a video, it is not a great opener for a paper because it is the from the dawn of time statement. And in academic papers, the more you do things like video games with the word duty in it has been around for forever and ever because video games have been played since forever and they've always been around. The more you have to justify everything that has been said by backing it up with facts and evidence and quotations and length of space. So one of the biggest mistakes that you can do is start off a paper by doing general, vague, from the dawn of time, everything introduction. These present you with lots and lots and lots and lots of things that you have to back up and explain and you will lose yourself in the entirety of all of that before you can get to your actual paper. So please do not do that. According to the dictionary, this word is actually this. It shows that I am right. I have an introduction now. In a lot of academic papers, if you present a definition, it's actually better to include it as a paragraph where you start to define for the audience what we're going to be talking about. This will be incredibly important for your issue analysis paper when you present one side and the other's side and how they view a particular issue. So let's say you have abortion as your topic. If you present one side is for abortion and the other side is against abortion, you're going to have to define what abortion is or what a fetus is. This will have to be done in a paragraph outside of your introduction and thesis. So when you're doing that, you don't wanna start off with, here's a topic that we're going to talk about and let me tell you all of the terms that we're going to do. Don't do that in the introduction. Do not do that in the introduction and thesis. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. One thing you're going to want to avoid doing is giving up your credibility by posing a question. Here's an actual customer out here. Uh, what's, uh, what's the best kind of firework to buy? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? So when you're crafting a thesis and presenting the idea in the form of a question, it's not what you should be doing. It sounds counterintuitive saying something like, Why is smoking weed illegal? <laughs> dude, you got the best barrels ever, dude. Just like... Just like, yeah, don't do that. Because like all of these news anchors, the problem is they give up their authority to someone and they are at their mercy. So I, if I pen something, if I write a paper, I am at the mercy of my audience if I ask them a question. If I say something like, is Chick-fil-A an organization someone should support or not support? Find out in my paper. It might seem like you're presenting an introduction that might grab someone by the head or shoulders or whatever it is that you want to grab them by and shake them and say, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. But it doesn't work because you are now asking the audience what your position should be. That is not what you want to do. Another thing that might at first appear to be counterproductive is to be incredibly specific like incredibly specific. The reason is because being vague does not present you the opportunity to further your paper. It actually hinders you. You got a tattoo! <laughs> <laughs> so do you, dude? No. Oh. Oh. Dude, what does my tattoo say? Sweet! <laughs> what about mine? Dude, what does mine say? <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> what about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet! <laughs> what about mine? Dude, what does... It hinders you because you're so overwhelmed with everything that you could possibly present. You need in your thesis to be incredibly specific at the get-go. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too! <laughs> Gee... I wonder what that was about. Hmm, whatever will she get? So let's say we go back to... Why is smoking weed illegal? As a lot of you for your issue analysis papers have decided that that's the topic that is really pressing on your brains lately. So in this way you could present something like... <clears throat> Pardon me, madam. 
The legalization of marijuana in certain states has projected benefits such as business economic booms, source-safe dispensaries, and significant medical treatment. But there are also challenges as these states are facing many different things. For example, people driving high, young adolescents' addiction, and unknown health risks that have yet to be projected. Y'all hear? That example comes from a student's very first draft in one of my classes. They gave me permission to share that with you all, and I think it's very important that you at least hear how it's still not polished yet. It still has some moments where it's not exactly how it should. And this is why we continuously revise and edit and revise and edit until we get a polished product. But do you see how specific it is there? They actually present a map point and a map point and a map point and then another map point and another map point and another map point to try and get us to think about how this is going to be structured. In this way, we see that this paper presents us stepping stones to get to point A to point B all in one or two sentences. This is what a map point is. To sum this all up, you do not start a paper with from the dawn of time everything was. Also, do not start a paper with the dictionary defines this issue as this and it's very important. And finally, when you're crafting your thesis statement, it should not be vague, it should also not include questions, because questions give up your authority and being vague presents you with a wandering in your paper that you'll never recover from.